Well, we ended up getting the sand truck done that is pulled out of here and we're ready to start the next project, which I wanted to do after I got the roller done, but the sand truck ended up going down and that had to be done before we got into this next project. If you recognize what's in these pallets, what we have here is corn planter parts. So we've got the 16 row planter outside. That needs most of this stuff. And the 12 row planter needs them discs there. So we'll go outside and we'll give it a little walk around. Give you a little walk around of this planter here. We got these out, I don't know, a week, 10 days ago. And I wanted to get them out before the roads went to crap. And then I didn't get to working on them right away. And they ended up getting snowed on. So Nathan's blowing the snow off. Now I need to unfold it. Let him get in there a little better. Get the rest of the snow blown off. So that we're not working with a lake on the floor of the shop here. It looks like he's done a decent job. So we'll go ahead and jump up in this 8220 get this unfolded make sure he knows I'm getting in here and we'll unfold this let him get it blown off the rest of the way and then we can get it inside well, this hasn't been unfolded in a while so Everything kind of needs to adjust itself a little better here. Now we'll hit unfold. And we're in decent shape there. Well, that'll allow him to get the rest of the snow blown off. I need to kick in neutral here. Go forward a little bit. No, I gotta go back. There we go. Alright. He doesn't want me to back up. So we're gonna leave it right there. Yeah. I think we're good. That should blow off pretty easy. So. We'll join up with you once we get it inside the shop here. Well, we got the corn planter inside here. Nate's got all the snow blown off of it. And there's a little bit of stuff here and there, but not much. At least it's not going to leave a lake. And the shop. So we've walked around it here, and the main thing we're bringing this in for is fertilizer discs. We have the 2 by 2 uh, fertilizer openers up on the front of the planter. I didn't replace the fertilizer discs last year because they weren't ready to be done. This year, however, they are ready to be replaced. We've got the disc that we're going to replace, and then we've got the actual scraper that goes alongside it, and then the fertilizer comes down uh, the back of it. We only have to do the six rows on each wing. I ended up having a couple of bearings go on the uh, discs on the four rows that's on the main frame. So those have already been done. Um, I think the newest one that I put on was this one here. So these have had the bearings replaced, the disc replaced, and the tomahawk scraper that comes in alongside the uh, fertilizer disc. So we are going to do the bearings on the other ones too. Now if you recall, we ended up rebuilding this planter uh, last winter. Actually it wasn't last winter, it was last spring. We ordered a puck kit for this planter, which was everything from the toolbar back. 
new hopper, new row unit, new gauge wheels, seat opener discs. The closing wheels are Schaefer uh, closing wheels. I ordered it without closing wheels. And it has the electric uh, drive. Another thing that we ended up putting on this with that kit, the upgrade kit, was the fertilizer, variable rate fertilizer uh, kit. It had the tank on there, however, it just had a, a Blue John or a John Blue pump on it. Uh, this kit has the hydraulic downforce as well and that is right on the money along with the electric drives when you go around a corner it slows down the rows on the inside speeds up the ones on the outside it is so accurate well the fertilizer too the fertilizer i should say is so accurate that it recognizes that it is putting on a higher rate of fertilizer where it's dropping the seed slower when you're going around a corner and it will alert you that you've got a couple of rows on your inside unit that aren't responding correctly or you're under applying on the rest of the planter this upgrade kit that we put into this planter was over eighty thousand dollars now a lot of guys probably wouldn't even spend eighty thousand dollars on a planter but these planters now 16 row planters I don't know, 260, 280,000. I'd have to look it up to be exact. But a 24 row planter is over 400, I believe. I'll have to check that. I, I don't want to quote you wrong there. But Nate's working on that side there. Um, these can be a mongrel. Uh, the gauge wheel for the fertilizer disc usually ends up seizing up inside this hub here. And usually we have a heck of a time getting that out because it's just a hollow tubed hub with tapered bearings on the inside. The seals don't usually last. The bearings usually end up going. And you know, this one's pretty tight. Yeah, that one's decent. Uh, some guys don't like these. And the reason why they don't like them is because they don't know how to adjust them. The, uh, you have to make sure you have that scraper just, it has to be adjusted properly. Or what you'll get if you've got too much of a gap, you'll get stones to come down over the back, little tiny pebbles, and they'll wedge themselves in there and they will lock up the disc. They'll lock it up to the point where they will end up having a flat spot in their disc. Must be somebody put enough anti-seize on that one, Nathan, to get that apart. But acts like number two is not coming apart. Oh, God, oh, that's least of your worries right now. So. I better get to work here. I've only got a couple of bolts taken out on my side. Nathan's going to end up getting done. He's going to be waiting for me. Another thing that this needs, I happened to see a gauge wheel that was cracked. I don't know which one it was. I think it was one of the ones on the main frame here. And we hardly ever have any trouble with the gauge wheels so i don't know if this kit if they put on eh, it's right here we've got a crack in that one so the tire probably kicked out a stone or something and the stone rode against it cracked the plastic um on that gauge wheel so we're gonna have to get that off of there and then the other thing we'll have to do is we'll have to go through with our business cards and our playing cards and all of our special blocks of wood and we'll have to make sure that 
we've got the gauge wheels and close tolerance of the seat opener uh, discs. I'm sure you guys have all watched those videos with these highly intellectual YouTubers that know how to adjust the corn planter. We're just going to eyeball it and we're going to run with it, aren't we, Nathan? And you know what it's going to do? It's going to plant the corn just as fine. So, or maybe we should go through a special uh, setup program so we can make ourselves look awful smart. That's what we should do. Make ourselves look awful smart. <laughs> All right, we better get to work here. This is uh, just boring stuff here. So, yeehaw. Well, so far so good for the right hand side of the planter. I've only got one gauge wheel that won't come off. That's pretty standard. Nate's got a couple that he's fighting with, but so far it looks like he's going to be able to get the fourth one off. And he's down to maybe two that have a problem. And once we get these apart a little farther, we'll show you how much of a mongrel they really are. But uh, we've got one, where is the one? Here's what they are here. So there's a shaft on this L-shaped arm. There is lefts and rights for these arms. And it goes through the hollow tube hub assembly for the disc uh, well the disc hub and then it comes through this other side and pins uh, with this little cleat that kind of keeps that gauge wheel at a desired height so if you can't get them off we can take this set screw out of this nut that kind of holds this hub assembly into this arm here and then usually you sacrifice the uh, shaft and arm that goes over and hooks on to the actual gauge wheel. Usually you sacrifice that and uh, this bearing hub here. We can't hit on this too awful hard because the very end of it, there's not much material there and we have to be able to put a cotter pin in there so that if the shear bolt shears off the arm doesn't come off so usually when this happens or you get to the point where they will not move you're usually in the field with limited tools in other words you don't have torches or anything and this can be a problem so Actually, it doesn't look like this one was worked on too long ago. Looks like I might have just replaced the disc itself. Maybe the disc bent or something. But um, it appears that I have a bearing that is loose on this one here. And then this disc is not that old because the scraper is not that old. Here's what a wore out one looks like. And then we're not quite adjusted up correctly there. It should be adjusted over a little tighter. This bearing is tight. Nate said he's got one that's war that's bad on his, but you know, that's got some wobble to it. So let's get after that. Alright, so we have removed the set screws from this nut went ahead and busted it loose now hopefully this pub will just come out of here just like so and then of course yeah take that apart like that and I'll take this over to the bench and we can maybe put a little bit of heat on this here maybe that'll come apart Well, we got this unit over on the bench. I've got the gauge wheel off. I ended up putting a nut on there just so I don't lose the appropriate amount of washers and spacers. We'll go ahead and get this disc off of here and then we can put a little bit of heat on this and try to pound this 
arm here out of the wheel. Well, we ended up sacrificing the arm because of what the end looks like now that we have pounded on it enough to where we have mushroomed it over and the cotter pin isn't going to go in there anymore. So we're going to pound that out of the hub and then we can get the hub out of there and move on to the next one. Well, we have gone through and removed all of the parts that we need to replace. And we are getting ready to start reassembling things here. I wasn't going to do the four discs on the mainframe. However, I decided that we are going to do those. Number 10 was bent and number 6, 7, and 8. Was it 10? Yeah, 6, 7, and 8, or 8, 9. 7, 7, 8, and 9, where they had enough wear on them that I figured that we would just go ahead and replace them and maybe hold on to the discs. Now, on these Tomahawk style scrapers, I didn't remember the problem that we ran into last year until I just went to lay out all of our parts. The part number on the right hand side scraper is uh, A116466. And the left side is a 67. However, there's some of these on the left side that are numbered 66. There's that one there. There's the correct number, I think. And there's another 66 right here. So we're not sure uh, which way they're supposed to be numbered. We've got eight more coming from Kaz, so I can get a couple of spares, but I need the right-hand side of the planner. Now we've got all of our parts laid out here. I lack one fertilizer disc. There was one of them that I took off. The best one that came off is bent, and that is, right here now i could probably put a washer in behind it or something to get it to work but we've got quite a bevel still left on this disc here and then we've got a few of these that are 
in decent shape that we're we could just save them and that if we run halfway through the year or something and bend one we'll have one uh, to put on so I've got a few spare hubs here I do lack I think I'm gonna lack one of these uh, spindles and then of course we've got all of our bearings laid out it seems to be that we are doubled up on bearings I don't know why but I've got uh, I guess I didn't count out the bearings yet but it looks like we're doubled up on races I guess so we'll get after reassembling things I've got some new arms here as well and we spent a couple of them so one other thing that Nate noticed we do have an issue with this closing wheel frame I'm hoping it's just a screwed up bolt and bushing I hope that did not get into this main part of well it's still replaceable so if anything else we might have to replace that but we do have to go through and check these closing wheel frames I'm hoping that's not turning into an issue because this ain't got that many acres on it does it Nathan a couple thousand is all well now that we have everything removed I have two, four, five, I think there's five extra hubs. And I have done bearings on the fertilizer discs before. However, I have not replaced the inner race. So we're going to replace it this time around. And to make it a little easier to get the races out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of weld on the inside of both of these races then when it cools that's going to shrink and when it shrinks it down it'll come out easier so we'll go ahead and get that done and then we'll let all these cool rip them races out and we can of course uh get the new races put in I thought I would take a little break working on the corn planter and show you what we actually use this sand truck for now if you didn't follow along in the last few videos we ended up having to do some extensive repairs to this sand truck being that I had a broken frame now today's Thursday we usually put sand in on Mondays we missed this Monday because I was working on it and then of course we had a snowstorm that came in here on Tuesday and for what you can see here for for the most part it has started to melt here pretty good right now now this sand truck is 12 years old we also have a trailer drawn unit that we could pull with a tractor we could have got that out of storage hooked up a tractor to it and used that but it's not as convenient to use as the sand truck is so we'll just kind of peek in here a little bit show you what we all did to it here everything looks like it should now I did get some comments, you know, throw the sand truck away and 
use skid steers. Well, we're having to carry this sand quite a ways to get it into the barn. Now we could dump the sand at the end of the barns and carry it in with a skid steer, but we really like to put the sand on concrete so that we can get it all cleaned up. And we also don't want to get any organic material mixed in with the sand, um, whether it be dirt or what have you. So he's going to run it over to the far barn over way over there and we'll kind of show you how this thing works i know i've shown it in the past and for the most part most of you have seen it uh, in use so we'll go ahead and uh follow him over to that barn and we'll show you how this thing works so this is the barn that we added on to this year and He's bedding a heifer group right now. We've got heifers in on this end that are bred. And these uh, heifers will go right into a close-up dry cow group. And then once they freshen or have a calf, they will uh, go right into the milking herd. Now there's a group down there that is into the parlor. They've since gone into the parlor and that gave him the ability here to be able to bed this. So that's when we bed the stalls is when the, the groups are into uh, the parlor. So he has to come in through uh, this group here to get down into the groups that were milked. That's why he is bedding this heifer group right now as well so he's got a little bit left to finish out this side here and then once he gets his gets down to the end or runs out of sand he'll uh, do the other side so he can spit the sand either way we don't level the stalls off the uh, cows kind of level it off themselves. This holds eight, nine, ten tons, somewhere around there. It's all hydrostatic drive. It kind of drives like a combine or a chopper. You've got a lever to move forward, go forward, and the farther you push it forward, the faster it goes as far as ground speed is concerned. So that ought to give you an idea of how this unit here works. This is a dry cow group right here. He's bedded the cow group already, and then he's finishing up uh, this dry cow group. Dry cow's up to right where that gate is right there.
this section of the barn right here, being that we got close up dry cows in here in this group, we don't uh, have alley scrapers on this side. We clean this with uh, the back truck. We have alley scraper on that side of the barn. It's a separate unit that runs this new end here down to oh let's see well you can see the doorway right there come back this way a little bit we've got one alley scraper unit that cleans the other side of the barn and then it pulls the manure down into a slot that is on uh the end of the barn here about 15 20 feet uh from the doorway so that'll give you an idea how that works. He is empty. He's gonna go back and get another load. And then he can bed his left side of the barn here. We got another man in here helping him running gates back and forth so that he can just keep shuttling loads into the barn. He's just backing across the manure slot. So if we want to, we can clean this with a skid steer and push it into the slot and then that goes out into this manure pit out here all right that'll give you an idea how that all works Well, we've got all of our hubs, all of the races have a bead of weld in them now. And they've had a chance to cool. We're going to start pounding them races out in a minute here. Nathan has a few of these, six of these scrapers on, and he is going through and replacing fertilizer tubes. The tube that goes down to the actual opener itself. So we'll go ahead and start pounding these races out of these hubs. And now we can start and we can start installing the new ones. So it's not too pretty of a weld that's on the inside of these hubs just because the grease that was still on there really didn't allow us to put a really pretty weld on there but it does not have to be anything too all fancy. So we'll get a chisel in there, something to bite against them beads of weld and just pound, start pounding them out. the pile of races and whatever pounded out of all them hubs put two pieces of angle iron on the bench to kind of hold them in place Nathan's moving right along here what do you think Nathan it's tough work working on this stuff just think that's what these crop farmers do all year all winter long they work on stuff like this day in day out and you know us dairy farm guys, we, we don't know about this kind of stuff, you know, it's a little different, you know? Slaving over that bench, pounding them things out, and running around on a chair, taking bolts out and stuff. This is tough work, you know? Just think if we were growing, you know, 6,000 acres, twice as much as what we're doing now, how much more work we would have working on 24 row planters you know i mean that's that's the reason why we don't have a 24 row planter 
You just look at the amount of work we're having to do on this 16 row, it would be 50% more work, you know? Man, I don't know. Don't worry, we'll try to get through with this, you know? This is tough stuff. You should be using an impact on that. You're using, you're making this job harder. You're using all hand tools, you know? Use an impact, you know, make it easy. It's just gotta, oh man, it's tough stuff. I don't know. We'll have to give each other a high five and a pat on the back here in a little while, you know, for, yeah, yeah, just for all the hard work we're doing and, you know, whatever. Well, we're gonna clean these hubs up here and start installing the new races. Well, we are now pushing these races into the hubs. And this is the first time that I've actually used this press and we've had it for almost a year now. So I've already pushed one race into the hub. Prior to the press, we would just pound them in there but it is a little handier to have the press here to be able to just kind of push them down in there. And it kind of, kind of saves all of the whacking with a hammer. So we'll go ahead and show you how this works to push this in. I'm sure most of you have seen how a hydraulic press works, but we'll show you how this one works. Well, that was the second one that we did and that didn't work so good. Uh, this didn't quite go in there straight either time. Um, and uh, I was moving it to the outside of the race and attempting to push it down. And that worked on the first two. However, on the third one, I got a little too brave and I tried pushing it down through in one stroke and that did not work and it cracked it. So this is the cracked one that I've pulled out. I've got this piece of heavy wall DOM that I'm going to use. That just is just inside the actual diameter of the race itself. So we have to start making up a collection of different drivers to use on that press and we'll cut this you know, four or five inches long or so, and then we'll probably have to put a flat plate on top of it 
and then use this to push the race down in. Another thing we could do is grind this down a little bit so that it fits inside this here so that it can kind of walk its way down into the hub itself and not get caught up. So we'll go ahead and get this cut and um, use it for a uh, pusher. Now I've had comments in the past, you know, GN, do you get what you pay for? And buying non-name brand items like the airbags and the uh, fuel pumps. Speaking of fuel pumps, we've got to get them installed. There's four of them on the floor there. And these are fill rights. And they are made a lot better than them blue generic ones. But if you followed along a couple of videos ago, we had that uh, chop saw. That, oh, what the heck kind of saw was it? What kind of saw was that, Jared? Evolution. We had that Evolution saw. I guess that's not a name brand saw. And that didn't do the trick. So we're back to using the generic stuff or the name, name brand stuff. I guess you can call Milwaukee name brand as well. So... It would have been nice to have cut this with that evolution saw, but um, being that it's not a name brand piece of equipment, <laughs> uh, which it is a name brand uh, unit. So we've rambled on. Let's cut this and get pushing some more races into the uh, hubs here. All right. So we've got this piece of metal cut here, and that's going to fit right on top of that race. And then we're going to use this piece of flat stock here on top of it. I had to move the head here down. I probably should have made this piece either a little shorter or a little longer. Let's see how this works. This is just about the size of the actual race itself. Hopefully I have enough jack here. We might need to put a thicker piece of steel on the bed here. I bet you we're going to run out of jack. This is just a um, all a little stub to weld on an implement for a jack. works nicely. We're going to go grab another one and continue this 14 more times. Alright, we've fought with these green little guys forever before, prior to using the press. 
I've actually taken a grinder and tried cleaning them up with a grinder just so that they would fit. And the reason why you have to have them is the rubber part of the seal that rides on it. pushes that in there nice and evenly. So that is very nice. Well, I have to say, this press worked very nicely. We ended up pushing just shy of 32 uh, races down in the uh, hub. And then we squished in just under 32 of the plastic rings in there. The little thing that the seal rides against. This is very nice. It's got the foot uh, control. Therefore, you can free up both hands to hold your material that you're working on. As we get using this more and more, we'll end up making more plates up and different guides and whatever like that now somebody might be saying well you shouldn't be using a piece of pipe well this is heavy wall dom this is pretty stout stuff uh we're gonna have to put our little spacers and stuff like that under lock and key because someone's gonna come over here and they're gonna be like oh i need a piece of four inch whatever i'm gonna use that and it's gonna end up welding getting welded into a project or i need a little three by three three eighths plate so we're going to have to keep that under lock and key. Nate went through and reversed all of the uh, closing wheels. You can see this has got the rounded edge. This was over on this side. Uh, we just flipped them around. We're hoping to get one more year out of these. I did order a set of Schaefer Mohawks for the... Um, 12 row planter. I see we've got a set of plastic ones on here. I must have had a broken one or something. I don't know why those plastic ones are there. But at any rate, they're on there. This closing wheel frame, there's a couple of, of um, they're kind of like bushings that go inside here. They've got a, a recessed shoulder that sits in the frame. And then they got a couple of nubs that sat in the actual bracket. They were broke off broke off the left side one broke off well here they are right here um they're supposed to have two little shoulders on here there's one on this one and the other one's broke off and then both of them of course are broke off of this one here he's got all of the scrapers on there for the um fertilizer discs now what we can do is we can go through and start packing these bearings with wheel bearing grease and start putting all of our hubs together. I went through all of these little spindle things here and uh, went around them with a wire wheel. So we'll have to get uh, anti-seize on them and get everything all put back together. While we've been working on this, Jared has been working on his engine. He ended up getting the sixth wrist pin. So he's got the sixth piston in place. He's got the fuel pumper on there, fuel injection pump. And he went ahead and put the head on a little while ago. What is this head? Is it a brand new one? No. So he went through and Recon the machine shop went through and reconditioned this head looks like brand new and painted it So this is slowly coming together here and uh, Yeah So I guess that is gonna do it for this video. I Want to thank you for watching and we will Catch you at the next one